All right, on to China, and we've seen protests in the streets of Hong Kong again today. They were broken up by tear gas and the like. Uh, protest is in Hong Kong against the new laws that's going to be imposed by Beijing to take away more autonomy from the people of Hong Kong to make them exposed to laws of sedition and the like. Uh, Australia and other countries have joined in a diplomatic protest against these laws. What, in reality, though, can we do to stop the eventual just complete um, complete uh, recolonisation, if you like, of, of the Hong Kong system? Chris, we're seeing um, the communist regime doing what it does uh, normally, and that is to not comply uh, with international law, not comply with obligations. I mean, there were clear obligations under the um, Sino-UK uh, treaty uh, that led to this position. Hong Kong was to have been left uh, as it was, things unchanged for 50 years, but clearly that is not the intention of the communist regime. And it's very clear from what we've seen recently at the Congress that's been held in China at the moment that there is this clear plan, and the clear plan is to incorporate uh, Hong Kong into uh, China and disregard the one country, two uh, systems that had been the basis of the framework. Obviously, what we're seeing in Hong Kong, what we're seeing in the South China Sea, what we're now starting to see in other areas, for example, there are reports now of trouble on the uh, Indian-China uh, border. This is typical behaviour of the communist regime. Um, it disregards international law. It is not acting as a good international citizen. And most especially, I think what's happening, Chris, is that we are seeing that under cover of the pandemic and with the world distracted uh, dealing with the uh, coronavirus that came out of China, uh, China is taking the opportunity to continue enforcing its illegal claims, most especially in the South China Sea. But when it comes to Hong Kong, uh, we can protest all we like. There's nothing much the international community, community can do. It belongs to Beijing. They'll destroy the very economic foundation of Hong Kong if they make it the same as mainland China, but the world can't really stop it. Well, that's the reality, Chris. And until you have a situation where uh, the bully or somebody takes on the bully uh, and the bully is brought to task, then uh, they will continue uh, to do what they have been doing. Because when it suits the communist regime in Beijing, then they utilise and weaponise international uh, treaties, obligations, just, entities. Just, when it doesn't suit them... Just very then briefly, then... sorry, uh, Connie, we're nearly out of time. Donald Trump has raised the, raised the prospect of sanctions against China. Should Australia get involved in that? Well, I think that we should be looking at all options in relation to uh, the communist regime. And that's the reason why, Chris, going back to your first question, I think post-pandemic, from a domestic perspective, I think we also have to look at it's not going to be business as usual with the communist regime after the pandemic is over. And that's the reason why I've been pushing for plans, not just to oh. decouple from China and reduce our dependency, but also look at how potentially we can gain some compensation for the billions of dollars that the Australian taxpayers have had Whoa, to borrow. That's a whole other issue. Thanks so much for joining us, Senator. Thanks, Chris. Thanks very much.